I want to talk about Samuel Smith pubs. There are around 200 of these up and down the country. Sam Smith's pubs are a bit different. They're a little bit cheaper, they only sell their own brand beer and snacks, and they're the perfect place to visit if you love going to the pub, but you're not that interested in it being nice. <laughs> they're also very fond of enforcing rules. The man in charge of setting those rules is this guy, Humphrey Smith, a direct descendant of the original Samuel. Humphrey doesn't like music, phones, laptops or swearing at his pubs. There are reports that in 2011, two men were thrown out of a London Sam Smith's for kissing, which is awful. Some Morris dancers are kicked out of another one, which, weirdly, I'm absolutely fine with. <laughs> <laughs> so why does this happen? Well, if a landlord doesn't enforce Humphrey Smith's rules, they could end up on the wrong side of him, and he is pretty tough. How tough? As a tribute to Humphrey Smith, Mark and I are naming all of our beers after his finest moments as an employer. Like this one, the forbidden F word. After the time, our favourite Charles Dickens villain... Humphrey Smith? Yes, Mark. Closed the pub and sacked the landlord after just seven weeks because he overheard a customer swearing. Oi! Swearing? Foul language? I will not have such things in the presence of my delicious beer. <laughs> mm, like nectar. Please, Mr Humphrey, don't fire me. Not only I will lose my job, I will also lose my home. Well, you should have thought of that before you allowed someone you'd never met to do something you had no control over. I will not have swearing in my pubs, even though I myself am a complete <laughs> For fans of a dark ale, we've been working on a new stout, the Preposterous Pudding. Named after the time Humphrey Smith closed down a pub in Sheffield because they didn't have his favourite pudding. Yep, that actually happened. It did happen. <laughs> Oi! Mr. Landlord, how dare you refuse me? I wanted a bowl of my favourite pudding to take away the taste of this delicious beer. You're fired! I'm sorry, Mr. Humphrey Smith. We are completely out of a spotted dick. Spotted what? Dick. Swearing in my pub? You fired twice! That last bit didn't actually happen. We're just having some fun, don't ever think it. <laughs> now for our star beer. You're particularly proud of this one, aren't you, Mark? I'm absolutely hammered. Joining me to drink this one, Akira and Ella. Now, you used to be landlords of a Sam Smith pub, is that right? Yeah, we did. unfortunately. During the pandemic, we got sacked and evicted um, from the pub and, obviously, our home at the time. So, after you were sacked, were you out of pocket? Yeah. yeah. About £980 after tax and then the £1,000 bond. So, you were in the middle of a lockdown, kicked out of your home... Mm. Aye. ..by Humphrey Smith? Yeah. And what reason did he give for that? We were sacked because we didn't hit our 6% surplus target. That brings us to our final beer, the 6%. In honour of Sam Smith's policy of insisting their landlords retain a 6% surplus in stock, giving you 6% less than a full glass and fattening up Humphrey Smith's ever-fattening big fat pockets. Here is another thrilling reconstruction. Oh, hello, Mr Landlord. I was just popping by to see if there's any chance of being able to unreasonably sack you. No, Mr Humphrey, to avoid the swearing, we now only serve nuns, and we have plenty of your spotted penis pudding. Oh. Well, never mind. Would you like a pint? A what? A pint. This is a Sam Smith pub, Mr Landlord. We don't serve pints, we serve 94% of a pint. May I remind you of your contractual obligation to serve 6% less than a drink by giving a very frothy head to a pint or putting loads of extra ice in a soft drink? I'm sorry, Mr. Hempery, I should have remembered my contractual obligations. Next, you'll be wanting to give the customer an enjoyable atmosphere and some drinkable beer. Where's it going to end? You're fired! So you don't want a point, then? Not in this test pit. I'm going to spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to an expert in employment law. Lovely guy. Good cocktails. We'd see each other again, I think, as friends. <laughs> He told me that Sam Smith's engaged in some of the worst practices he'd seen. And, of course, this is all the more upsetting for the sacked managers because their accommodation is tied to their job. This isn't just one person's opinion. I've got statistics. We found Humphrey Smith's employees have filed more employment tribunals since 2017 than other pub chains of a similar size. These claims include counts for unfair dismissal, wrongful dismissal, disability discrimination, disability harassment and breach of contract. And that's not all, is it, Kirsty? You've got something there. On top of that, in 2018, 
The pensions regulator requested financial information from the brewery to check it could actually support final salary pension schemes of the more than 2,000 employees. Humphrey Smith replied, We are in receipt of your tiresome letter and we're not prepared to divulge the information. That's his actual statement. But the pensions regulator was fine about that. Oh, no, they fined him and the brewery nearly 28 grand. <laughs> Close enough. I think that's called a toss tax. <laughs> so what to do? Stage a thought-provoking campaign or just be really, really annoying? <laughs> to find out which I chose, watch this subsequent footage. Oh, hello there. It's little old me, Joe Lysett. And this is the lovely little market town of Tadcaster. Well, a map of it. Can you guess which Dickensian villain makes this place his home? Oh, there's the little tinker. It's Humphrey Smith. His Samuel Smith Brewery is a local fixture on the high street. While he himself lives in a massive mansion just outside of town. In an example of his pure benevolence, in 2015, the bridge that links the two sides of Tadcaster, just here, was destroyed by flooding. The council asked Humphrey Smith if they could build a temporary footbridge on land that he owned, but he refused. On one side was the GP, the other the pharmacy. And so the residents had to make a 12 mile round trip to get from one side of Tadcaster to the other. Poop, poop. I'm opposite the old brewery, the headquarters of Samuel Smith. And I've opened my own pub, modeled on the Humphrey Smith ethos. <laughs> it's a dump. <laughs> We're open for business. Would you like a beer in my new pub? No, thank you. no? Never mind, have a nice day. So one of the specialities here is the 6% pint. 6% beer, 94% froth. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Then, just when things couldn't get any more depressing, this fun sponge turned up. A Sam Smith's employee who didn't seem to appreciate me stealing their business model. Hello. Just having a bit of fun. We've got to watch longer, is it? No, it's true. Would you like a pint? Well, I've called the police, so they'll be for me. You've called the police? Yeah. Seems a bit of an overreaction. What crime am I committing? Hello? It's it. Is that your license? Yeah. Um, I've been called to a protest. Sure. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to assume this is it. Yeah, well, I'm actually opening a pub. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you're not going to arrest me. No. <laughs> That's right. a relief. No, that's not a problem for me then. I will leave it true. Thank you. I went to see if I could go on the Sam Smith's brewery tour. Oh, hello. Look, it's my old mate who called the police on me. <laughs> We'd just like to speak to Humphrey about Kieran and Ella and the way they've been treated. And maybe a full pint would be nice. You've got very good skin. What's your regime? Now, we did actually contact Sam Smith and they got back to us with this response. They say that many long-standing employees who, despite the difficulties in the pandemic, they've continued to pay in full and cover their utility bills. They sent a warning letter to Kieran and Ella, setting out concerns before dismissing them, and they allowed them to stay in the flat for several weeks after that. Money was lawfully retained from their deposit and wages because of damage to the pub. They deny serving short measures. Their surplus policy is in line with association guidance and was agreed with trading standards. It encourages managers to avoid wastage and customers can request a top-up. Pub managers are salaried employees who agree to follow simple policies. Closers and dismissals in the past only happened after repeated written warnings of breaches of these policies. <gasps> there was no need to allow the temporary bridge to be built on brewery land and they provided the pensions regulator with required information. So there. 